Okay, I guess we can get started because uh, we'll be doing introductions the first couple of minutes anyway. So I don't think a lot of people are gonna gonna miss on the actual cooking. Uh, okay, so welcome everybody uh, to this LAN event. We are the Latinx Alumni Network. Uh, welcome you to this uh, first event for for uh, Hispanic Month. Uh, just a little bit about us before we start. Uh, we are part of the broader alumni associations, and we serve to uh, you know, present the voice for Latino alumni from Mar the University of Maryland and, you know, to try to enhance the alumni experience through, through events like this one, uh, which hopefully you enjoy. Um, so specifically about this event, uh, I Jalisco is a Tex-Mex restaurant in Montgomery County. Uh, it boasts two locations, uh, both in Montgomery County, and uh, it uh, is the runner-up of the uh, MoCo Show's uh, best Tex-Mex restaurant in Montgomery County. So they're pretty, pretty well known in the area and we're very, very lucky to have them with us today. Um, so before we do anything, uh, this event will be recorded. The event will be recorded. So if you don't, you know, we need obviously everyone's consent. So if you don't want to be recorded, you know, just don't, don't show your camera. Uh, simple as that. Uh, we want to respect everybody's boundaries, of course. Uh, then uh, the other thing is that if uh, if you feel so inclined, if you want to, you know, share your cooking skills and what you do with this, please share on social media. Tag us. We're in Instagram as UMD Lawn. Uh, use the hashtag cooking with hashtag cooking with UMD Lawn. You know. Um, so then, before we go to the actual chef, uh, basically we want to just run an agenda, right? So first, we're gonna we're gonna start with the. Um, with the chef here, he's gonna teach us first how to do the guacamole and the quesadillas. Then we're gonna do a raffle. Uh, then he's gonna go ahead and teach us how to make the margaritas. And then we're gonna finish with another raffle, which I'm gonna let Pam explain a little bit of. All right, so welcome everyone. We are very excited to have you all here. I'm going to share just a quick fun facts of Latinx Heritage Month. So grab a pen, grab a paper, take some notes because the second raffle is going to be based off of this historical uh, fun facts. So to start us off with, Hispanic Heritage Month actually began as a commemorative week, not a month, when it was first introduced in June of 1968 by California Congressman George E. Brown. Now there was a push um, to to recognize contributions of the Latinx community and that gained momentum throughout the 60s when the civil rights movement was at its peak and there was a growing awareness of the United States multicultural identities. Now, fast forward to 1988 when Ronald Reagan extended this celebration from one week to an entire month. Um, so now we have an entire month and UMD LAN is going to be hosting a few events. So keep an eye out because we are going to have just we're gonna have about three events this month. Also, we wanted to share that Mexico, one of the uh, Latinx countries, has 68 national languages, quite a few languages, 68. And there's also 20 countries around the world that speak Spanish as their primary language. So hoping that you all got those quick fun facts, keep them written down because we're gonna be using them for the raffle later on. Back to you, Walter. Okay, so with that, I uh, hope you uh, pay attention to what Pam said. Uh, it will come in handy later. So now we'll go ahead with Chef Juan, who is the main chef at Jalisco, as well as uh, the co-owner. Uh, and go ahead. Well, thank you. Uh, please welcome and thank you for the opportunity. And this is a blessing uh, of celebrating the Heritage Month, like you said. Uh, so we're here to to support, we're here uh, to thank uh, all the alumni uh, from UMD. Uh, I'm so proud to have one of, <coughs> to have my son graduate from there. So, uh, welcome. Um, I'm so excited. So, let's do it. So, as as the agenda went, uh, we're going to start making the. Guacamole, so hoping that you all have the perfect uh, avocados. So, let's see how lucky I, I did get with this uh, 
avocado it came out perfect <laughs> so Bastante. If they're not too ripe, the seeds get, get a stuck. So this time it came off, as you can see. So we're going to start dicing it up uh, the avocado. And I'm using a spoon to scoop it out. Okay. You're gonna use the other half. You can use knife, you can use the same spoon that I'm using to scoop it out. Okay. See how easy that came up because the avocados are nice and ripe. Okay. So one is not enough, right? Because you're gonna share it. I'm assuming you guys are gonna share it. <laughs> That's what they said, right? Always is good to share. Look at that. Nice piece of avocado. So doing the same thing with, with the first one. Okay. All right. Better luck with this one. Oh yeah, as you can see, the seed came off nice and easy. Hope everybody's uh, doing uh, good this uh, through these hard times with the pandemic. So we're following all the guidelines. Uh, uh, from the government, okay, so it's gonna take it out. The seed doesn't do any good here. So I'm gonna use a couple of spoons. If you had the, you know, just trying to smash it down, okay. You could do it either way, with, if, you, if you have a masher, or a couple of spoons, Forks that can be used also. You can see that that's coming along very well. Okay. Okay. You can see that since the avocados were nice and ripe, ready for to be be made with this uh, guacamole. So it is the other ingredients that I have prepared, pre-made, pre shop As you can see the red onion, I love the red onion. So we're gonna add the onion. It all depends how, how much onion you like to add. Okay. I just add like, I would say like four teaspoons uh, I have some jalapenos. It all depends how spicy you want. That's also another thing that is up to you. I have shoved some red jalapenos also. So they come on a different color. So it's gonna add a little bit. So some cilantro, okay. Cilantro, okay. Some diced tomatoes. Okay. As I said from the beginning, uh, I know you all have the ingredients. I, I'm adding a little bit of olive oil. Well, let's measure it. That way we all know where we're standing with the 180 wife. So a teaspoon of olive oil. Okay. All right, so I got some sea salt, 
regular salt is fine. You just put a hint of the salt is your call. I will do two. Just going to smash a little bit. Okay. Also, I'm gonna add a little bit of black pepper. Okay. Okay. And then just mix it up. Um, so we're making nice fresh guacamole. There's some customer going by saying, what are you making? So I guess they, they also get excited here, look, looking, looking at me making some fresh guacamole. Some restaurants, they do a table side, which I also offer it here just in case, you know, there's some customer, oh, can you make a fresh guacamole table side? Of course, I can never say no. So, as you can see, nice and ready guacamole to be eat it. Okay. It all depends how um, chunky you like to live it. And this is ready to go. Okay. There is some corn chips. All right, because the table was a little bit with the bump over there. As you can see, both guacamoles look nice and fresh. Okay, one it was made at the table, and the other one was prepared back in the kitchen. Because we do serve a lot of guacamole, so please enjoy it. Please try it. We got a guest over here that I wants to try. It. What do you think? There you go. That's what I said. It, it, it all depends your call, how, how spicy you want it. So, okay. I'm going to the next step. Uh, whenever you guys uh, ask me to. So. Hey, go ahead. Right? How are people doing? What was that? Okay, we're going to give it like a minute to catch up. Oh, okay. I'm going to read some comments here. Yeah. Maria Carter says, Buen provecho. Nestor Romero says, Amazing. You made it look so easy, Chef Juan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Of course it is easy. It is easy. <laughs> Natalie says, gracias, Chef, for sharing and taking us step by step. Melissa okay, Blanco, wow. a special message from Melissa Blanco. Who's she that? Says, Hi, Dad. I miss your cooking. <laughs> it looks delicious. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, I know she's on the other side of the country. So, <laughs> welcome. Anytime. Appreciate all of you who are uh, showing us your videos so that we all struggle together. Jose <laughs> 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 well, he says, not that easy. A mi hasta el agua hervida se me quema. <laughs> We're with you there, Jose. Mine too. <laughs> but not at I Jalisco. They know what they're doing over there. <laughs> Thank you. How's everybody feeling? Should we move on to the next step? Should we give it a few minutes? Yes, no. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Oh, thumbs up. Okay, <laughs> we can move forward. So I'm going to share this with some customers. Uh, 
You doing a live Zoom? Yes, some fresh work I'm on that I just made. Right, yeah. So Jonathan just said the olive oil was a nice touch. Yeah, I've never, I've never done this with olive oil either. That was okay. Well, not only that, it gives a nice uh, touch. Also, will save uh, to get that blackness. You know, and if you don't finish it, then that will kind of uh, uh, hold that. Uh, like use it as a preservative, mm -hmm. but it's a, uh, but it is natural, natural preservative. Well, we're giving up, uh, folks a few minutes to catch up. Yeah, I want to say until like maybe one more minute. Well, they haven't finished the guacamole. It was in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Chef, can you so share easy. A, few, a few fun facts about I Jalisco? Okay, fun facts. Okay. Uh, we're so glad that uh, we're in business 22 years. So that means a lot. Uh, we're very local, uh, uh, what people call it, uh, gym, uh, you know, Gatesburg, uh, uh, they know us so well. And personally, uh, I had the honor to be on, a, on another uh, cooking segment for, on Channel 9. Uh, actually today, today, eight years ago, was that show on J.C. Hayward at okay. noon on Channel 9. It is true, today. That's amazing. We are yeah. very happy to have you here and very proud that you, you and Henry are part of our UMD Latinx family. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Thank um, you. So we're here, we got, you know, with this pandemic, we've been very careful what we've been uh, handling uh, food wise, you know, uh, we have a, an outdoor seating, we have a, uh, a tent outside also, so people love that. Uh, they love to sit outside. And now with this, uh, hoping that we can get some more business. Thank you very much. Uh, we're, we stick, we're here for good. We're here for good with all the support with the local people. Well, I would say around the world. People are knowing, know us so well from everywhere. So I had some clients that uh, they had come, they've been to Africa and they came back, said, you know, we're back because we love uh, your food, your cooking. So we're here. Um, anytime you all want to come and and, and I can do the uh, guacamole table side. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, we have just a few more comments that we'd like to share and then we can move on to look at the videos. Okay. Carson Elias says he had no idea of all the wonderful things I Jalisco has been able to accomplish. He said, lo que es saber. Gracias, Chef. Thank you, thank you. Nora says, share your secret, Chef Juan. Why is a good taste on guacamole? <laughs> well, I already did. <laughs> I already did. Uh, uh, and, you know, the, the, all the ingredients are there, but uh, as everybody tells me, my hands, uh, what I do with my hands is just another, uh, an extra, uh, how would you say it? Can you see that? Can you see that? <laughs> the salt. <laughs> salt. Have the magic uh, touch. <laughs> the magic touch. Touch. Yep. Thank, Thank you. Guys, we are picking up our takeout order in a couple. <laughs> 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 that works out. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think we can go ahead uh, and start with the quesadilla. Okay. Well, I, I already got the, I will call it griddle, a pan, um, like a flat pan, um, in order to, to start making the quesadillas. It's a preheat, 
I miss to let them know if they can preheat that, but that that doesn't take too long. So this is an easy. I already got um, some grilled chicken, which I'm gonna warm it up. I don't know if you guys are able to see that's a piece of chicken, which I have used it. You know, it's pre pre grilled. Okay. And here I got some already diced. So it can be, you know, like a pulled chicken, uh, in any way that you like to. I'm just gonna put it here just to warm it up. How about that? You can do that too, okay? The idea to bring the whole piece was just to show you that it was a free grill. So we're gonna use the tortilla. I'm, this time I'm using flour tortilla. Uh, you guys can, I mean, if you are allergic to, to flour, you can use corn, okay? I'm using, uh, as I said, uh, the mozzarella mixed with the uh, Monterey Jack. That's mozzarella is fine also. So this time it is, mix of uh, mozzarella and Monterey Jack. That's what we use at the restaurant. Or it can be used any type of shredded shredded uh, cheese. I got some uh, cheddar and Monterey Jack here. So, you know, the nice uh, yellow shredded chicken, I mean, cheese. So, All right. Plato. Para servir un plato. Okay, so I'm going to put another tortilla. This time I'm gonna use the yellow cheese. It can be used either cheese, like I said, uh, of your choice or whatever you guys have found it at the store. Okay. Quiero enfocar la, la cámara. As you can see, one is uh, with mozzarella and the other one with the cheddar. Okay, this is nice and easy. Appetizer, or main course, however, you know, some people have this as an appetizer. Some people has it as a main course. Okay, and, and then you just fold it out. Fold it out. Oh. Okay, you see it. Okay. See? Oh, look at that brownish. Look at that. Okay. Look at that. So we're just gonna let it, you know, melt the, the cheese and that also will get nice and warm, okay? So we're gonna make some room here. So we can serve that. Okay. Look at that. That's coming along so well. Okay, I can tilt that over if you like. 
This is an easy way for me to do it. Look at that. Hey, you guys do, can do that? Be careful. Okay, so I'm just gonna take it out and serve. There we go. So just took it out. Then you can just cut it whichever way you guys want it. Like a, a slice of pizza. Look at that. So, and then you can just add the, uh, how about some of the guacamole in there? How about some sour cream? Mmm, yummy. Look at that. Or your, I have brought some uh, hot salsa. Okay. Look at that. It's a spicy. And this other one is mild. So it'll be your choice. That's a nice and easy quesadilla. Are you guys following me there? Good. Looks beautiful. Thank you, Chef Juan. We have a okay. few questions for you. Uh huh. Did you put any aceite in the pan? Did you put any oil in the pan? Well, very much, yes. Just to uh, wipe it down. Uh, uh, since I have, I, I had it preheat, so that's that is an an easy, uh, easy way not to the quesadilla not to, the tortilla not to get it sticky. So that's the other half of, half of the quesadilla that I made. But this one is with the melted uh, cheddar mixed with a uh, Monterey Jack. Is it common to make quesadillas with crema and queso fresco as opposed to Monterey Jack cheese or mozzarella? You know what, it's, it's your choice. So some people, Original comes uh, with uh, Monterey Jack. Uh, mm -hmm. Now this day you can find uh, mix it, Monterey Jack mix it with mozzarella. So you could do uh, queso fresco. Yes, you can. Uh, there is a lot of cheeses out there. Is is a cheese of your preference? I will say. Wonderful. Thank you, Chef. We also have Ada Larios. She asks, "Can we get the secret to the salsa?" <laughs> Ooh, well, it is an easy. This is what we do. The same thing. Real jalapenos, real onions, but not dice it like this, okay? Some grill, everything is grill. Adding some cilantro, salt, pepper to taste, okay? Uh, then some uh, black pepper, some. Um, garlic, and, and a tiny bit of uh, cumin, and then fresh cilantro, fresh cilantro always. That gives the, an, extra, an extra flavor. Wonderful, thank you, Chef. We have uh, just a couple more questions. Lori asks, can you use rotisserie chicken instead of grilling it to make it quicker? Yeah, of course you can. Remember I mentioned whatever you can find, like shredded uh, uh, shredded chicken, that is perfect. Uh, you're not asking me, but uh, like su Sunday, um, I went to a party, and this is just an, an, a story that I'm- oh, Go ahead, go with it. <laughs> I mean, a friend of mine, we, you know, we're very close friends, so, and it was getting chilly, it was uh, like 11 at night. He goes, I think uh, like a sopa will do good, you know, like a, a and then I, I, I came here at the restaurant, pick up some chicken broth that I had. And guess what? We had some of the rusticity chicken at the party and we had a lot of chicken. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm talking about a lot of chicken. So what I did, I start pulling just the chicken breast, okay, shred it and just dump it in the soup. And the soup came out perfect. With the nice uh, cold weather we had on Saturday night, midnight, oh my God, everybody was drinking that sopa. And we were, everybody was outside. So around the pool and it came out so perfect. So 
Y es que cooking is always an art. So, you know, making here, picking from there, a little bit of this. Hey, if you like it, my, my thing is, if I like it, I know somebody out there will like it too. Wonderful, thank you, Chef. Thank you. Now we have one more question. What heat do you recommend for the pan? Low heat, medium heat, high heat? Medium heat, medium heat. I mean, at the beginning I had a low, because you know, we were just playing around. So when I was ready, it was already uh, warm up. So then I put it into medium. So medium heat is fine. Because don't forget, uh, all what you want is the cheese to be, to melt it. So you don't want any burning. Wonderful, thank you. How is everybody else doing? Just doing a quick check. Are we all doing good? Yeah, so I think I'm definitely not the only one. I did not have the chicken ready, so I'm like a couple steps behind. It's hey. almost getting there. It's getting there, but we do need some time. Hey. I know that. Uh, I I mean, any any that, feeling. But any I know feeling come on, that you can I can't put see it anybody, in. but I know there has to be some people. <laughs> and any feeling that you have, you know, like it could be just vegetable or just the cheese itself. That is a quesadilla. So, you know, some people, they just want something quick. And believe me, this is one of my top sellers here because why? There is people coming, you know, running, you know, going back to work and say, hey, if I make you a quesadilla in less than five minutes. He goes, are you sure? I said, positive. If I don't bring it here in less than five minutes, you don't pay for it. He goes, what? Okay, so that's me. <laughs> Wonderful. Grecia asks, hi, Theo, how do you season your chicken for the quesadilla? How do I season that? Okay. Well, here at the restaurant, I have my own uh, seasoning that has got the name of the restaurant. Uh, so that is a, yes, that is a secret. In that, uh, it, it is my recipe, so <laughs> you hardly gonna find it somewhere else, but in I Jalisco. That's correct. If you want to get the secret ingredients for the chicken, you have to go in and buy it at Ay Jalisco. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Jose, I see we have a quick story here from your grandma. I'm going to unmute you and you can share. Okay. Now, is, uh, uh, can everybody hear me? <laughs> Hello? We can hear you. Okay, yes. No, like, I love my grandma to death. Like, she's the one that cooks all the time. But this lady, con todo mi corazón, she always makes sopa in summer. <laughs> Who has been, like, literally, like, been defied by the, their grandmothers making sopa in the summer, especially this DMV summer? I can't. I'm like, can we wait till the fall to make the sopa? That's the, the weather that we can have some sopa, not in the summertime. <laughs> That was my story. Thank you, Jose. Sopa is right. for the soul. <laughs> Sopa is always welcome. <laughs> All right, we're doing a quick time check. How's everybody feeling? Let us know in the comments. Or give I'm, I'm dead, yeah, facts. Jonathan, too? Was that, I'm with you the, about the Sopa? I'm guessing yes. Um, okay, so while we catch up, and um, definitely still have to catch up, um, I think we're going to go ahead and do the first raffle. Uh, that will buy us some time, and um, we'll make at least one person happy. So what we're raffling is a, a gift card to I Jalisco. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so uh, once uh, you get it, at the end, we'll, someone from mine will reach out to you, and, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, figure out how, to, uh, how you're going to get that gift card. Um, so let me, give me a second. Oh. 
Okay, can people see uh, my screen? We can see it, yes. Okay, all right. So I put it, so not everybody who registered came here. So this might take a couple tries. Um, so I'm gonna spin it uh, and then, uh, you know, we'll get somebody, hopefully that person is present. And if you are, please, you know, say something. And if you're now, we'll just roll again until we get someone who is. So here we go. Okay, we got Jesse Ventura. Okay, is Jesse Ventura here? I don't think Jesse is here. Yeah. Oh yeah, Pam, you can help me with that. No, all right, cool. All right, so we keep going. Your fingers crossed that one. <laughs> Fresh I Jalisco. Nestor Romero. And Nestor Romero is here. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Bet. All right, Nestor. So we'll, someone from the LAN team will reach out to you right after the event and uh, to let you know how to, you can claim your prize. Uh, now. Congratulations, Nestor. Uh, yeah, now wait, give me a second. Do I... Oh, no. Oh, oh another winner? No, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> trying to figure it out. Wait, give me a second. Okay, stop the sharing. All right, there we go. That, that wasn't so hard. Okay, so I guess we'll give people a couple more minutes to, um, to catch up a little bit. Uh, what's the feel here? Okay, oh, Lindsay and Tim, I see you guys are hard at work over there. Good job. <laughs> You're making two quesadillas. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, and in case you weren't here at the beginning where we stated this, uh, at the end, we're going to do another raffle for another gift card. So definitely please stick around uh, and we'll do that at the end. As you guys are catching up, we're going to also do a, a margarita recipe. Chef Juan's gonna walk us through that, so stay tuned. Coffee. Was I the only one who had to bite tequila for this? I did not have to kill in this household. Ahora lavar los trates, I'm dead. Yeah, so Sarah, uh, we're actually recording this event. Uh, so yeah, this uh, will can probably share that with you uh, after this. I'll, uh, Sarah, I'll, I'll reach out to you. Let me write that down. Okay. Making a virgin margarita. Yeah, no, I have to do the real one. I'm like, I do not, I'm Peruvian. I have Pisco in the house. I don't have tequila. But in any case, um, okay, so I think, uh, what do you think, Pam? Um, we, For those of you that have your cameras on, thumbs up, thumbs down. Should we keep going? Sarah says yes. Angelica says yes. Lindsay and Tim, yes. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, so Chef Juan, whenever you're ready, you can take it away. 
as I mentioned, I think uh, we had talked about, you can use any of the tequila of your choice. Uh, this time I'm using Jose Cuervo since we're displaying uh, Jose Cuervo bus. Uh, <laughs> promoting, giving them a promotion without any pennies. Uh, so using a grandma near to just to give an extra sweetness and so as the triple sec using Montezuma. Uh, so let's see. We're gonna get some ice so you guys can see that. Okay, I will say about four ounces of ice. Uh, gonna cut the lemon. Um hoping that you I think we mentioned using a fresh lemon. Limes for, for the limes. We call it limon. Okay, we Latinos, okay, we call it limon, limon verde, limon verde. So, but I have uh, already pre I squeezed, which I have used uh, two lemons, I will say. It is uh, two ounces of uh, lemon juice. Uh, if everybody can catch up with that. Uh, I'm just giving them some time so they can catch up with that. Uh, uh, so just let me know how far are the other people. Is that gonna, Henry? Is that okay? Sorry, I did the step back, step out for a minute, trying to help out with the technical, the electrical thing here. Uh, okay, so we're gonna use the two ounces of lime juice. Okay, we're gonna use ounce, two ounces of tequila. Okay, this one has a measurement, so that's a line. If you guys can see that, I don't know if you're able to see the line. Okay, so to the line is one ounce, up to the top is two ounces. So, so that is two ounces of tequila. We're gonna use Of the triple set, you said uh, half an ounce, right? So it is half an ounce. And to make a little bit sweeter, stronger, uh, we're gonna use another half an ounce of grandma near. Okay. And then we're just gonna shake it up. I have the glass already pre-salted on the rim, okay? So, a little bit more ice. So you can hear the shake. Right. This is ready to go, so easy. Come here, boy. That's another alumni. Another turf over here. I got my. Uh, Look my at Rosa that. Margarita. Rosa Margarita. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Hey, turf. <laughs> What's up, Sam? There's another turf. Yes. <laughs> so, cheers. That's the other margarita. Did everybody follow it? Okay, that's fine. Take your time. I see. Yeah, just a couple sips behind. behind. That's fine. Sugar, ice. Okay, sugar. Either one is your choice. I think we're using the agave, right? 
Você gostou da Gaga? Yeah, I mean, uh, it is uh, making a margarita. It, it is another art of your choice. You know, it is you make it your own way. So let's see how much it was left on the. So I guess it came out perfect, right? That's what we call it perfect. Cheers. Cheers, Steph. For those of you that are that are cooking up your delicious quesadillas, making your delicious margaritas, whether they are virgin or delicious with alcohol, <laughs> um, please make sure to share your dishes using hashtag cooking with UMD lawn hashtag cooking with umd lawn i'm going to send that in the chat box please share your dishes you're here to see them and now we're going to hand it off to our umd lawn president natalie Weir. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us today. Chef Juan, thank you so much to you and I, Jalisco, and your team for teaching us and letting us learn how to make some delicious chicken quesadillas with some guacamole and a margarita. I'm pretty sure everyone is going to be enjoying their night. And if not making it tonight, at least you're going to be making it in the future because you will be receiving a recording. Um, so Chef Juan, we have some few questions just because we are in Latinx Heritage Month. Um, so why the name I Jalisco? Was there something special that you wanted to share or why that name? I think he's on mute. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Well, it is, uh, it is an idea between the partners and I. Uh, the, came, the name came from the song that it says, Ay, Jalisco, no te raje. It is an old time song back in the 60s. Uh, it was recorded and, and it's being recorded and recorded of, with the future, uh, I mean, new, new singers. Uh, so it, that's where we got the name from, Ay, Jalisco, because we call the cantina, the bar, no terrajes. So what does that mean? Don't give up. Keep on going. Let's do it. Thank you. And may we ask, what is your nationality? I'm originally from El Salvador. But uh, as a joke, I tell everybody I was born here at Cherry Grove. <laughs> <laughs> And then just to get you a little, to get to know you a little bit more, Chef, um, what is your Latinx personal history? What, what brought you to the United States? Why, why um, co-own a restaurant? Why own a, a co-own a restaurant? Well, uh, the way I started uh, when I was 15 and a half years old, uh, I first came to the country and I started working as a dishwasher. Uh, then I move on to as a uh, help, cooking helper, uh, and then so and so, you know, all the positions that you can name in the industry of, of, of a restaurant I've been through. I just love that, you know, that, uh, that I still, listen to this, I am still with my feet on the floor. That is great. And like we like to say, you started from the bottom and now you're here. Yep. Thank you. Yes. And I'm so proud of it. Uh, and all the support. I love my people. I love my clients. Uh, they just love me the way I probably, the way I am. Uh, so as you can see right now, the restaurant, I can tell you uh, with this uh, uh, pandemic, uh, um, capacity that we have inside the restaurant we're very much full uh, outside the patio it is full the second patio is halfway so there is still room there is still room there is some people can come over well I hope you can save us a table or a booth because I believe we're gonna have a land board meeting there to have some dinner at least some lunch during the weekend <laughs> we'll be here thank you 
Thank you. Thank you, Chef, so much for sharing your wonderful, wonderful meals and a, a margarita. Thank you. A pleasure. Thank you. And back to you, Walter and Pam. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Chef Juan, you are a true Latinx excellency. You are not only representing El Pulgarcito de Centro America, you are also representing all of Latin America here in Montgomery County and in uh, Maryland as well. So we are very proud to have you here. Thank you so much for sharing your history. Well, thank you. Thank you. And like I said, uh, we're here to support. So let's, let's stay together with all this. And we're going to make it through. Um, you know, we're Latinos and proud. The side note, the margarita worked. It stays really, really good. So, you know, and I suck at making these things. So just so you know, you're good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Pam, I guess you can do the raffle whenever you uh, you feel you uh, sure. you know, we caught can go up. Ahead and do a second raffle. So is everybody ready? Are you all ready? Let me know. Thumbs up. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead with my question. In the beginning of this program, we shared a few fun facts of Latinx history. We told you all to write down these, these uh, fun facts because we were going to quiz you all for a uh, gift card to go to Delicious I Jalisco later on. So this is how it's going to work. I'm going to ask a question. You all, whoever gets to um, on this chat box here, whoever answers the question first, gets that gift card. So we're gonna go ahead and ask our question. Just a side note, lawn members are excluded from this gift card. I know I am sad too, but you know what? We are here to uh, service the UMD, uh, the UMD alumni community. So my question is, if you all remembered, uh, Latinx Heritage Month went from being one week to one month. When did it go to being one month? What year? Ooh, we got a first entry here. Evelyn Flores. Good job. Round of applause for you. You win that gift card. Wonderful. Now I'm going to give it back to Walter. Okay. All right. So... I think that's all we have for you all. If you want today, um, we'll be reaching out so that you can um, get your the gift cards that you want today. Um, I'm still catching up with quesadillas. I made one successfully. So hopefully everyone learned a lot today. Um, I certainly did. Definitely will be enjoying some good food. Um, and we hope you uh, join us. We still have two more events uh, coming up for uh, Latino Heritage Month. On September 30th, we have an event, a professional event this time, called Navigating the COVID-19 Labor Market, in which we have uh, professionals, talent recruitment professionals and talent management professionals who are going to give us tips on, you know, how to navigate the current labor market, which, you know, the getting a job is always hard, but it's even harder now. So uh, we got you this really good panel, and we hope you can join us with that. Um, and then we have another uh, similar event to this one with a different restaurant later in October, and you'll be hearing news from that uh, later. And uh, I wanna say that's everything, uh, Pam, Natalie. Yes, and we want to give it back to Chef Juan, just give you a huge shout out. Thank you so much for joining us. Any final words, Chef Juan? Well, uh, why not share this with my son over here? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it is a pleasure, uh, an honor. Uh, it has been great. I have a lot of people here uh, watching us and they're asking uh, questions. Uh, what are you guys doing this? And then we tell them. I just said, they're so, you know, they, they feel so proud. And uh, I love you and thank you. So let's, let's keep on. 
Well, keep on going, Chef Juan. Thank you so much for sharing your beautiful restaurant, your delicious recipes, and also sharing your unique Latinx experience with us. And thank you also to your son, Henry, for helping us uh, put this all together. Henry is a fellow UMD uh, Terp, so thank you so much, Henry, for everything. Well, um, just adding up uh, uh, an extra words. Uh, I want to thank to my wife. Uh, She's really doing my job right now in the kitchen. So she's struggling back there, but uh, she's handling, as I can see, you know, a lot of orders are being packing up. And, you know, thanks to her, um, we, we were able to, to do this also. And thanks to my partners. Uh, I know they're probably watching the video. And, uh, like you mentioned, two locations in Gatesburg, uh, I Jalisco on 355, I Jalisco here on the Snowfall School Road by the airport. So welcome to any of our locations. Okay, well, everybody, yeah, go ahead, Bam. Oh, sorry, go ahead and opening it up to the UMD Lawn Board. Any final words before we, we sign off? Okay. Well, everybody have a great night. Uh, take care and hopefully uh, we see you next time in the next event. Hasta luego, Chef Juan. Se cuida. Gracias, gracias. Un abrazo. Cuídense. Ah.